Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting. Well, maybe this is right. Rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have from Old Elk. Not that rare. I have the Amagnac cask finish. Ooh, straight bourbon whiskey finish in Amagnac barrels. And I have 54.25%, so that's 108.8 proof. So I bought this in America, had it shipped over here to Germany. So I paid $90. You have to add another 50% basically here for postage, handling, taxes, import, excise taxes, and so on. So it's 145 euros by the time it gets here. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. Great, great, great marketing here, all right? So you have the little emblem here. You have the little coat of arms thing here as well. I mean, beautiful, heavy bottle. Very, very nice. So um, I actually just typed into Google distillery, old elk distillery tour. Didn't get anything. I typed in old elk distillery tour with um, instead of videos, I put in pictures. Mm. It's interesting enough on the website for by Old Elk, they say we have a production site, but we don't have a distillery. Huh. I don't know if you ever heard that. Production site, but no distillery. They're still in the process of... Um, Old Elk Distillery is currently a production facility, sorry, with a vision to open a larger distillery in Colorado. Hmm. All right, good. We have a guy, his name is on every bottle. We have ja George, George, we have Greg, Greg Metz. All right, so good German names, yay, Greg. So he um, worked for MGP for, I think, 30 plus years. So we have a guy, um, we have basically the owner here, and he had this vision. Um, his name is Kurt Richardson. He's the founder of the Old Elk uh, Distillery. He's a multimillionaire. He owns also something called, um, what was it called? Otterbox, which I don't know about. I'm sorry. And he wanted his own ham hometown of Fort Collins, Colorado, a distillery. So 2013, it's like, let's go for this. And then he was like, okay, where do we get, where do we get juice? And of course, in 2013, where did you go? You went to MGP. And who worked there? Greg. So Greg worked there and um, Old Elk basically purchased 13,000 plus barrels. And um, Greg created recipes um, for then Old Elk, which I think is a fantastic idea here. So we have this is our nice little bourbon. It's not a it's not a wheated bourbon. It's actually more of a high malted barley. <laughs> Sometimes we talk about high rye. Well, no, in this case we actually have our um, our high malted barley. Why do I say that? Because we now have something here with a mash bill of fifty one percent corn. 34% malted barley and 15% rye. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to inform us a little bit about what does the grains cost that go into this whiskey. So imagine you are um, Jack Daniels, 80% corn. Imagine you're uh, George Dickel, 88, no, 84% corn. All right, so you have the majority of what's going in here is corn. A bushel of corn, which is 25 kilos for me, is then four dollars it used to be at least that now everything's gone up everything's crazy at the moment but let's say go back to before before covid four dollars for a bushel of corn so you times it by about then if it's 25 kilos that'd be times 40 to get a ton a metric ton so you're paying there about 160 dollars per ton for the corn no problem so if you want barley um, you're going to pay a little bit more. Wait, go to rye first. Rye costs $8, so 8 times 40 is 320 And if you go to barley with a 34% in here, you're going to go for $24 a bushel. So that's six times as much. So $840 per bushel. I'm sorry, per metric ton. So eight times as much. That's, sorry, six times as much. That's still a lot of money more just for the raw materials here. But that was not the problem for our multi-millionaire. Uh, he was like, I want the best smoothest whiskey possible. And malted barley might make your whiskey smooth. Good. 
So that's what we have here. That's this recipe in here, and that is very, very interesting. Now, Old Elk also has some other stuff here, and I thought that was kind of cool because they have a um, high malt bourbon. They have a straight rye whiskey, the same thing, 95.9. Where's the bottle here? The Old Faithful here. Um, they have a straight wheat whiskey with 95% wheat and 5% malted barley. I haven't even seen that. And they have a straight wheat um, bourbon. So it's a wheater. So 51% corn, 55%, 45% wheat, and 4% malted barley. So 51 corn, 45 wheat, 4% malted barley. Basically the minimum that you can have with the barley. If you're not going to add enzymes and enzymes in there to get that whole thing going, so um, they have three proprietary. <laughs> they have three of their own mash bills, and they share that 95.5. So, and this is our nice little thing here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it to something. So, I have this box. This box says on it here. For five years, Whiskey Jason, and from your true or from your super fans and your colleagues. So, I received a bottle last year of Armagnac. Now, I personally like, um, um, I thought I liked Armagnac. <laughs> Let's say that. I've had an SMWS Armagnac that was fantastic. And um, so, what... I was given, and this bottle says it here, look at the vintage, 1968. So they thought that was my birth year. I was born a year later, but hey, no problem there. Um, but this is actually a, um, a Amagnac. So, so it's all in French, as it should be. We have 50 CL, we have 40%, and we have from 1968, which is, I think, just mind-blowing. And so I'm going to use this old Amagnac here as my reference. What should I be tasting? So let's pour a little bit of in here. Now, I'm not a great fan of this bottle, as you can see. Um, I thought I really liked Amagnac. Apparently, I'm not the biggest fan of it. So on the nose. Now, this is a very sweet, almost a toffee, almost a sickening sweet moment. And then it turns a little bit. I get a tiny, tiny little bit of ivory soap moment. And I get a lot of this grape. Like a caramelized grape juice. Never had it, but that's the thing I'm getting here. Caramelized grape juice. Interesting, interesting. Now this, this is their Kentucky Straight Whiskey. So we have our high, high rye mash bill. Oh, by the way, they actually put out here a Old Elk Straight Bourbon Sherry Cask Finish. Um, they had an Old Elk Straight Bourbon Port Cask Finish. They have an Old Elk Straight Bourbon Cognac Cask Finish. And they have the Old Elk Straight Bourbon Armagnac Cask Finish, which I have here. So, cask from France. Armagnac is more or less the rebel, the region. Um, and this, they only mature, they only distill it once, and it's very, very interesting how they do that and so on. And we have a little bit more of a rustic moment, is according to the official tasting notes here. And a full body whiskey with dark notes and a, a very broad finish. Okay, whatever that means. Okay, so do I, uh, do I get the Armagnac on this bottle here? No. What I get is, and this is the weird part about it, is I get that green wood note from Two Young Bourbon. Um, that's really, really a, um, a shame. So of the four of the, um, I've tasted four of my eight bottles so far that I brought. No, this is number six. I've tasted six of the eight bottles I bought from the U.S. Um, of those six that oh, I've tasted five so far, of the five, of five of the eight I've tasted, of the five, three of them have had that green note. Um, what am I talking about? The old tub had that. Just, it's just a youthfulness. It's just too young. I might be a snob now with bourbon. It's like, oh, I want my eight-year-old bourbon. Otherwise, I'm not going to drink it. This is a Kentucky Straight bourbon whiskey, but it doesn't really have that depth and complexity of a 12-year-old Elijah Craig barrel proof. 
of a Booker's, of a Stag Jr., of a, and um, of New Riff. New Riff is four years, but they're doing a little bit different there. But I'm getting that green wood note here. And it's disturbing. I, I was expecting something totally different, especially from MGP here. It does say five years on the back of the bottle. It does say distilled in Indiana. It does say here, what does it say? Bottled by? Bottled by Old Elk Distillery in the Fort Collins, um, Colorado, USA. But distilled in Indiana. So it's source whiskey. And I was thinking, I was hoping, I was expecting to have a much, much better whiskey that was five years old from MGP. I thought it was going to be great. $90, 145 euros with import taxes and shipping and so on. Just amazing how much it costs to get whiskey over here. And then I get green. I get a little bit of those rotting grapes, but not that much. Cheers. Hmm. 54.25. That's a C minus whiskey for me. C minus minus, almost a D plus type of whiskey. Yeah. I think I should have got the cognac. I think I should have got the port. I sh think I should have got the sherry. I bought the Armagnac because I've had some beautifully, beautifully made whiskeys that have been finished in Armagnac casks. They've been just divine. And I was hoping to get something as divine as I've had before, but no, I haven't. This is something here absolutely, totally different from what I was expecting. All right. Is it me or is it the Armagnac? Let's take a look at the Armagnac here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Fairly different stuff here. It's definitely not. I do get a little bit. Oh, that is Armagnac. That is nice. Um, if you've ever had some good Armagnac, maybe you should go down to Iron Root Republic and talk with them. They do cognac. They do Armagnac. Those are the guys that know, know a lot about what's going on over there. This is some good stuff. It's not perfectly 100% my wheelhouse. I'd much prefer a whiskey, but this is good. This is, in my opinion, not, did not hit the mark. Um, they went at least <laughs> 30 degrees off the side there. They might have hit the, the whole, um, it's not, the bullseye's in the middle, but the whole, um, they might have hit the target somewhat, but they didn't hit the bullseye. They're off. Um, hmm. Interesting. Not so. All right. Two questions. Question number one. Um, okay. Value for money, D minus. Sorry. Don't don't go buy the Armagnac. Maybe buy the Sherry Cask. Maybe buy the Port, port Cask. Maybe buy the Cognac Cask. But I cannot recommend the Armagnac. It does not meet my uh, quality standards. And it just um, tastes and smells young and much younger than it should. Um, question of the day. What other... Whiskies, not bourbons, not Irish, not single malt scotch, not things from other countries like Japan or Taiwan or whatever. But what have you had that has had a Armagnac? Or I'm going to broaden a little bit for everyone else. Cognac, Finnish. Cognac and Armagnac are sisters. All right. They're not the same, but they're relatives. Um, and if you can't answer that, maybe you can answer, hey, what old elk have you tried? Have you tried the high malt bourbon? Have you tried the whiskey, the wheated whiskey? Have you tried the, the wheater or have you tried the straight rye? Um, have you tried anything old, old elk and you go, ooh, good, good stuff. I know my friend over there on um, Rot Gut Review. <laughs> Cheers to you, my friend. Um, he loves Old Elk. They actually, he and Erica went over to um, Colorado, visited the distillery, the tasting room themselves, and brought back some bottles and so on. They just love this. But I, I'm not feeling the love right now, at least with not this Armagnac cask finished here. 
All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for liking. Thank you very much for subscribing and maybe even telling other, other people about this crazy guy over here in Europe tasting whiskeys you might not ever see and even have pulling out a 1968 Armagnac. Um, amazing. It was gifted to me from my super fans. Thank you very much. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.